What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the Stock Hustle channel with your boy, William. Today is Sunday, December 5th. As always, guys, nothing that is discussed on the channel is financial advice. Simply providing people financial education that I then hope they will use to understand. You don't have to slave in a 9 to 5 if you don't want to. You can easily hustle 24-7 in the stock market and achieve all those financial goals you have for yourself. As with anything else in life, you're always going to get out whatever you choose to put in, right? But uh, let's go ahead and get into it. As you guys see uh, or hear, I am feeling a lot better. I do sound a lot better. Uh, my throat is definitely doing a lot better. But I almost wish <laughs> I didn't have such a rough week last week, uh, especially with the market being as rough as it was. It was like a double whammy, to be honest. But as you guys see, uh, let's take a look at a couple of the indices. It was a very, very bloody week last week, specifically just about anywhere you looked. So as you see in the SPY, we essentially had a red day on Friday, one green day on Thursday, followed by Wednesday, Tuesday, and Monday, having a little bounce back from fr previous Friday, right? This is the drop of Omicron, essentially, with the one case in California, uh, and then followed by just murder the entire week, right? Uh, you had things like inflation, you had things like J-PAL turning hawkish, you had <laughs> uh, a lot or a lot of bad news last week. Uh, that did not help the market at all whatsoever in any way, shape, or form. Uh, just about anywhere you looked, it was rough days. Things like that have been really bullish lately, like MSFT, Microsoft, right? Uh, you saw get beat down. As you see, it had a very rough week. Uh, what's it called? Market favorites like AMD, right? Retail investors' favorite uh, had a rough week. Uh, NVDA, NVIDIA, right? Had a rough week, right? As you see, it was a pretty rough week. I mean, some things were not as bad as others, but as you see, pretty much anything on Friday had a red day. Uh, there was one ticker that surprised a lot of people, which was Marvel, which is a semi-play. M-V-R-L or M-R, M-R-V-L, M-R-V-L, excuse me, M-R-V-L. Marvel had a pretty good day on Friday, specifically, as you see, after earnings, it spiked uh, in the pre-market and did this nice run-up. Shout out to you if you bought into this play and made a ton of money. To be honest, I expected this play to pull back. Uh, I was very surprised to see this jump uh, out of this channel. As you see, it's been respecting this upward trend line and downward trend, or excuse me, bottom trend line and top trend line very well, uh, essentially over the last year. So I was one that was very, very surprised to see it jump up this high. I actually expected a pullback down to this lower trend. Uh, before it either broke to the downside or broke to the top side specifically on a bearish flag which is anything pointing upward essentially right uh, these normally break to the downside so uh, again i was very very surprised to see this specifically right but again if you had a rough week last week please don't be hard on yourself please understand uh, things like this happen in the market right we are in the middle of a, a turmoil turmoilish time essentially right there's a lot of things going on and a lot of uncertainty in the market you can easily see that if you follow the vix right which is the uh, essentially the fear index uh, for us markets or equities right anytime you see these massive spikes in the vix you're normally going to get pretty bad red days right uh, for across all spaces right no matter what you really invest in it, it's really difficult to go against the grain when the majority of the flow is is essentially looking bearish right um, that's why you i always tell people right it's very important to control your emotions primarily uh, you can control a lot of things, and a lot of things you can control, right? The things you cannot control, you can't control uh, mass amounts of people exiting the market, right? You had bonds falling, you had equities falling, and then this weekend you had crypto falling, right? So when you have all these things falling, right, that's out of your control. The only thing you can control is what you do, right? Which is, I know sometimes it seems really difficult, especially if you're new to investing, right? Because it's, at the end of the day, you're losing money, and nobody likes to lose money. No one likes to have a red portfolio. Totally respect that. Totally understand that. From a perspective that I used to be a new investor back in the day, like I totally get it, right? But uh, with time, I promise you that that tends to fade. That fear and nervousness and anxiety you get will, will fade. Uh, it's just a, a change in strategy, right? That's essentially all that has to take place, right? Uh, on Friday, you know, to try to help people out, I was still tweeting. I tweeted out SVXY as a ticker. For you guys to watch and keep an eye on right this is something i use specifically to kind of understand what the market will do um, especially when we have these massive massive red days right so this is essentially an inverted look of the vix right so when you see these massive red candles is it telling it's essentially telling you we're having a pretty red day in the market right 
Now, an important takeaway to understand of this chart, right? Anytime you see these candles, these giant red candles that look down on red days, especially, and they have this giant red wick at the bottom of them, nine times out of ten, we're going to have a green day the, the next day. Why? Because this giant wick at the bottom of the candle is price rejection, right? That's telling you buyers are rejecting lower prices and we're going to push the price up, which what happens nine times out of ten, we get a green day the day after, right? Giant red wick, green candle the next day, right? Giant red wick, green candle the next day, right? Again, there's multiple examples here, right? Giant red wick, green candle the next day, right? Again, and it goes on and on and on and on, right? Especially for the majority of this year, anytime you get these big red wicks at the bottom, you get a nice green candle the next day, right? So what happened this week specifically was I saw this on Friday, right? We saw this green day on Monday, and then Tuesday, we had j Powell essentially turning hawkish, publicly speaking, right, in, in the Senate or Congress or wherever the hell he was speaking, right? And it, it scared the hell out of a lot of people. And when I saw that, I saw that Tuesday's candle had no red wick on the bottom and not right away right it instantly triggered me to get <laughs> i guess anxiety if you will because i figured i knew what was coming you know a couple people that text me or that i text a lot had asked me hey what was i thinking on the market and i quickly responded you know i, I think it's going to be pretty bad this week and sure enough what do we get on wednesday another giant red candle again notice there was no wick on the bottom of it so i fully expected essentially after monday to have a straight rundown all the way through Luckily, on Thursday, we had this little bitty bounce, essentially, right, where you saw a couple things holding up, things like, I think Apple was the one propping up the market for the most part, uh, and I think TSM. Those two companies were probably, like, the two that I noticed that I watched frequently, uh, that I saw had really, really green days in the market. But then, as you see, Friday, more cases of Omnicon came out. Then you had DD delisting, confirmed that they're delisting from the United States equity market, right, and listing in the Hong Kong market. That is super, super bearish, right? I can't tell you or stress to you enough how bearish that is uh, to have a company just choose to delist. First of all, the DD's listing was pretty brutal, right? From the moment they listed, essentially, I think the day they listed, the Chinese government came out and said that they did not want them to list in the U.S. equities market. And what do you have? Nothing but a massive rundown. And ever since then, it's been in this 972 to 766 channel, right? Essentially back since July, uh, where it's been living here and now you have it confirmed and then what do you see friday boom plummet again and it's gonna keep plummeting right uh as i told you guys the other day in a video that i made real quick i told you guys if you pull up a 15 minute chart add you a 200 ema uh, this is a good way to trade especially for entries and exits right you should always have a strategy to enter a play and exit a play essentially if in the pre-market you ever see that we are trading well above the 200 ema nine times out of ten you're going to have a relative green day right however if you are trading below this 200 ema in pre-market nine times out of ten you're going to have a red day and as you see we have one we have two we have three we have four we have five we have six we have seven eight uh, nine, nine examples straight of trading under the 200 EMA having red days. These are easy put play options, right? You can play in a day, right? In pre-market, pick you up a put, pick it close to where the strike is. So if you're at 8.30, play it at the 8 or the 7.50 and just write that down. When you see a floor out or when you see these giant red wicks on the bottom of candles, that's telling you price rejection, which means the price could reverse to the top side. Sell it. Easy. Same day buy, same day sell. Easy play, easy money play, right? Uh, just a quick little gain, right? Even if it's 20, 30, 40, 50%, hey, being profitable uh, doesn't have to be these massive home runs. You can easily hit RBIs and singles all day, every day, and make just as much, if not more money in the long run, right? Because again, this is not uh, a race. It's a marathon, right? It's, it's to see who at the end of it all can become profitable, right? But Again, this, this strategy works for a lot of people. That's specifically something I'm going to be using here in the next couple of weeks, right? I'm not planning on holding anything long term or anything overnight, to be honest. Uh, it is really, really dangerous to hold things long term in this market uh, because it, it's very volatile, number one. Number two, uh, it's not liking a lot of the news that are coming out. And the more and more information that keeps coming out, it seems to be getting worse and worse and worse, right? I'll give you some quick examples. Specifically, uh, this is an article from Bloomberg. As you see, China stocks lose in U.S. top one trillion of delisting fear, right? So this is not just fear of DD. This is fear of like things like Baba, like Tencent, like JD, um, pretty much any company in China you can think of, right? Specifically, we can pull them up because I already did the research, right? 
Uh, we'll go to the one year, one day. I'll give you a couple quick examples, right? So let's do uh, Baba. As you see, downward trend. Uh, very well respected, bleeding. Essentially five days straight. All last week. It has broken the support like it was nothing at the 114.89. After that specifically, uh, we're looking at 100. So I am looking at a put play for tomorrow morning on Baba, specifically writing that down to 100. If I see it break past 100, I will hold that overnight into the next day. But more than likely, it'll be a same day buy and a same day sell for Baba. Uh, again, for those of you that are interested, uh, Tencent, again, same thing, same situation as you see, constant rundown hasn't had any kind of improvement all year essentially as you see we peaked here in june and ever since china started this whole uh attack essentially or i guess not attack but this whole strategy of uh, essentially being pushy that they want their companies delisted from u.s equity markets you see this massive rundown right what's another one jd right again downward trend very well respected as you see last week was a very brutal week it has broken through it's sitting essentially right at support so if it's below this 7750 or 7726 excuse me in the morning uh, i like it for puts all the way down to 6819 uh what's the other one pdd pindodo again same situation as you see broken through support and resistance essentially getting close to this 4987 but specifically for them if they break through this 4987 i like puts going down to 3774 but essentially pretty much anything chinese right now i'm looking at very heavy puts because again the news doesn't look good coming out of it uh, nothing is essentially doing good. Let's look at NEO. Specifically, I know a lot of people really like NEO, but as you see, last week was a pretty rough week for NEO. Five red straight days, broke the resistance, essentially trading now below, supported the 3392. You're talking the next area of support is 2804. Uh, again, when you're looking at risk reward and mitigating your own risk, what is your risk to reward on a play if you choose to go bullish on this, right? You're going to potentially reward yourself with $2, risking yourself 5 or $6. That doesn't make sense, right? Be very cautious with this. I would say that the 200 EMA strategy on this would be a good one to execute if you're looking to trade on NEO for now. Because again, the, the news isn't looking good. As you see, the 200 EMA is way up here. I highly doubt in the pre-market we will get anywhere close to being above the 200 EMA, which usually spells bad news, which means we're going to have a red day, right? And again, as you see from the history in the chart, uh, it, it hasn't failed, right? Trading under the 200 EMA is very dangerous right now. So I would probably say being bull or bearish on NEO for now, for the immediate future, would be a good safe bet. I know they are willing to share their books. I know they are willing to let uh, auditors go in and audit their books to make sure that their books on Cook. But again, anything Chinese right now is not a smart play. Uh, we'll look at a couple more, right? XPEV is another one that a lot of people are really bullish on. I'm really bullish on XPEV, but as you see, last week was not kind to it either. Broke through support at 48.26. Getting close to the next area of support at 42.78. If it breaks through this, again, I like puts going down to 36.77. Uh, what's the other one? Lee Auto is the other EV. As you see, it's a 28.50. Getting close to this area of support at 27.30. Again, anything past 27.30, I like puts all the way down to 24.36. But again, it's very, 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 very important that you pay attention to what you choose to invest in right now. I would say if you're not highly convicted in certain plays you're choosing to invest in, Please just don't. Or if you're going to go with the flow, play with the what the flow is giving you, right? That's why we have unusual wells. That's why it's such a resourceful tool. That's why it's so beneficial because it's telling you where the money is going, right? For example, look at this body play, right? You can click on the expiration date now and it'll give you a quick view, right? Specifically, as you see, look, 12,426 volume just on the Friday alone, right? But specifically also what you can do if you want to go ahead and do this, right? Let's say we wanted to play... Badu, right? Put it into the flow. Once you get into this flow specifically, well, here, let's do it this way. Filters. Let's reset it. B I D U. Go into this quick view, right? Just from the quick view alone, you get a significant amount of information. Look, five top chains by volume. Look at this. All puts. Again, it's simple, man. Like, don't go against the grain. Don't try to be a hero thinking you're going to measure the bottom. Because it's nine times out of ten, you're going to measure it wrong and you're going to take a loss for money, right? Shout out to you if you've done it before or you're really good at that. Uh, I give you props. Again, that is something that is very, very challenging to do is trying to read the bottom of a play. 
especially in a very bearish market. Right now, anything coming out of China is extremely, extremely bearish. Additionally, the last thing I wanted to mention was Evergrande news. Essentially, Evergrande is admitting to default and restructuring their debt by Monday's deadline. Again, this is $300 billion of debt that is eventually going to be defaulted in the Chinese government, essentially, is going to have to figure out what they're going to do, right? Or what they're going to do with this company, right? If Mr. Winnie the, Winnie the Xi is going to pick it up, pick up the tab, or if he's going to actually let them default, right? So it'll be very interesting to see this on Monday, right? But if they do truly default and they do go into bankruptcy, that spells just bad news even more for Chinese stocks. So again, please be careful. Please be careful what you choose to invest in. Uh, again, I will be essentially day trading all week next week uh start to finish so you'll be seeing a lot more videos coming out throughout the day so please expect to see that but as always guys if you have questions leave it down in the comments below don't forget you can always hit me up on twitter or ig uh, if you found value in the video give me a like or subscribe to the channel join the hustle and i will catch you guys in the next one